All right, Shalom, Barakim La, Allah, Hey, Anawa, Yahweh, by Hashim Yabashai. All praises, honor, and glory be to Yahweh, by Hashim Yabashai, who is the God of heaven and earth. Double honor, as always, them Yah to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, love, blessings, and salutations be to the hopeful elect. How by Yah, my Dabada, the house of David, the brothers laboring day in and day out, giving all diligence to make their calling of election sure, helping seal the elect of the nation of Israel. For the return of our Lord Hamashiach Yahweh Shai is at hand, and to the Akim Wagwaf, which are the brothers and sisters that also listen and believe on the glorious gospel being preached throughout the four corners of the earth. And to you I say Shalom. Shalom to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. This is the brother Sagala, back in the day, all through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yabashai, by Hashem Rakakwadash, by way of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to write this out as lessons edifying for those that view the lesson. So I'm gonna jump right into it. Just like pawns on a chessboard, everything that's going on is being orchestrated by Yahweh Bashim Yabashai in these last days. So just like pawns on a chessboard, as you see here on the screen, every spirit, every particular spirit or person is playing out their role. And the question really becomes, what role are you playing to each and every individual person? What role are you playing? Right. And whose team are you really on? So through observation, you know, I've uh, I've watched and um, and I've seen many people show their hands, you know, show their true colors and show their true intentions through the things that have been said, through the posturing, etc. And, you know, what we have currently is like a uh, situation where I call it uh, free agents. You have free agents. These are different categories you know, of people that's within this ministry. I'll just use this as an example. You have free agents, people that are not maybe a part of a particular group, you know, or a big box camp, but they teach the word, et cetera. And they, you know, might have affiliations, et cetera, but they're not a part of a particular group, so to, sp so to speak. But what I've seen recently also in like-minded brothers that there's a lot of posturing going on and that posturing is a lot of these you know people that don't belong to a particular group or a big box camp they posturing you know with everything that's been going on in the last few weeks right and a lot of these people are posturing for membership into a big box camp so they come and they do videos um but the significance of the things that they're doing they don't understand the big picture so many of these people, they're not familiar, you know, with, what, with what's really going on. They don't have the in-depth uh, understanding or knowledge of the scriptures. You know, uh, they might have learned from afar, but they don't truly know the ins and outs of what's going on. Of the infighting that goes on, the divisions. Right. So and, and the reasons why they only see it from afar, not knowing and understanding the full story, the history. Once again, what's really going on? They not they're not tapped in. So you many many of these free agents, so 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 to speak, they're not familiar with what's going on, but they feel like uh, a particular pressure or, you know, a particular feeling that they have to pledge allegiance, you know, and be on one side or the other. Now, the side that you would want to be on to any brother. You know, any believer out there, brother and or sister, is to be on Yahweh Bashim Yabashai's side. And how would you know that? Because the, the people that you will be listening to and watching, they will be speaking according to the word. Right? And in everything, and all that they, that they say, that they promote, they propagate on their platforms, that they preach and teach, it would all come back to the word, as the scriptures say. Right? So if they speak not according to this word, there's no light in them. And that the elect, the believers, you know, start with the elect men that's out teaching this word. They would be, they would be declaring the whole council of the Most High. So the allegiance that any person should be, you know, actually um, being pledged to should be the Most High Yahweh Bashem Yerushah. Because if we're not in it for that, then we, that's the wrong intentions. 
because the Most High's group, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is the elect, also known as the Israel of God. That's the Lord's group, not a particular brand or pledge of allegiance to particular people or brand or idealism or any of that. See, none of that is going to suffice in the times we're coming into, but everyone's playing their role once again, right? So with these pawns on the chessboard, you also have men, <clears throat> Salakia, that's within, you know, some of the big box camps who are also wanting a higher role and wanting to speak out once again um, to, to have a greater significance. Because see this shark in a tank, this piranha, you know, in a lagoon mentality of attack and rebuke and all of that, camp banging, no matter what people say, it is what it is. And we can see it for what it is from the inside and from the outside. For those that are, are honest in the spirit, that mentality, you know, that um, that way of doing business is almost out of here because Yahweh Bashim Yabashah is raising up even more of the elect who is within all these different groups. I know particular brothers that were in different camps <clears throat> as myself, as I was, you know, um, and that are coming out of that and sisters as well. So the point with um, all this being said, as I get into the scriptures, is once again, the Most High is orchestrating everything from the heavens. And that's what a lot of men, you know, fail to understand or fail to, to actually adhere to or to reason with is that the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is actually in control of everything. And let's show that because I've spoken long enough. That's why all the pieces that are moving, once again, are pawns. They're like pawns on a chessboard. So once again, what, what role are you playing? And who team are you on? Are you on the Most High's team? Now let's show that. Let's jump into it. This is the book of Sirach, the 42nd chapter. Everything is being orchestrated by the Most High, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh from the heavens. Sirach 42 and 18, and it reads, it says, he seeketh out the deep and the heart and considereth their crafty devices. For Ha'adawan knoweth all that may be known and he beholdeth the signs of the world. So if someone is wicked, or righteous, <clears throat> someone has done mischief, as Job said, you know, if he had hastened to vanity or deceit, let it let, let it all be weighed in a balance. So the Most High knows all the elect. The scriptures say the Most High knoweth those that are his and those that belong to him are the Israel of God, the elect. That's amongst all the big box camps and all the brothers and sisters that's out there that believe. That's within the circumcision that are believers in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Sirach 42 and 8, 19, he declared the things that are past and for to come and revealeth the steps of hidden things. Verse 20, no thought escapeth him, neither any word is hidden from him. So there's no thought or word that's hid from the Most High Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. There's no conversation. You know, there's there's nothing that was, you know, um, contemplated, planned, devised, schemed that the Most High don't know. So those that are not righteous, you think Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is going to let unrighteousness reign and deceit and lies, you know, be in the midst of his people? No. When you read Ezekiel the 14th chapter, it tells you that. The Most High is going to destroy the false prophet and those that are among them, you know, and those um, that are the two-thirds that are among them, the false prophet and those that are were deceived, which would be those that the Lord did desire, they're going to be destroyed altogether. And the Most High don't deal with these huge, humongous numbers. And anyone that's been in the truth any amount of time know that, right? He deals with small numbers, you know, for, for many reasons, because things become political and not spiritual, carnal, more carnal in nature, you know, and not spiritual. So the Most High is raising up spiritual men to be his leaders. So the Most High's group is the elect. Let's show that further. So there's no thought, there's nothing that's done that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah doesn't know. So as we continue on, let's move further and show that. Romans 9, there's a book of Romans 9 and verse 19, and it reads, it says, Thou wilt say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Who has resisted the will of Yahweh Shemim 
who can actually say that they're doing something other than the will that the Most High has set out for them according to his will, right? As it says in um, Jeremiah 17, let me just get it, who has resisted the Lord's will? So no man has resisted the will of Yahweh Shemim Shah. We are all playing, you know, our roles. Jeremiah 17 and verse 10, and it reads, I, the Lord Yahweh, search the heart, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So you have particular men lying and deceiving, right? Full of pride, et cetera. You think the most high, Yahweh Bashim uh, lest that person repent and change their ways. You think the most high is not going to bring judgment or, or for anything that's done that's unrighteous or for righteous acts. The most high is going to give according to the fruit of, of your doings. So now, as we continue on, the Most High's group is the elect. That's who is being stirred up, the pure minds of the elect. Those that are pure hearted. Those that, you know, seek and yearn to serve Yahweh Shemim in spirit and the truth. Not according or after the traditions of men, but purely according to the word, through faith and understanding. So, <clears throat> As we see that, I want to bring this precept here because it goes in line, you know, with that. This is the book of Acts 5 and 38. So anything that goes on, once again, is all orchestrated by Yahweh Bashim Yahushua from the heavens. Acts 5 and 38, and it reads, And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let, and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught, as it says in Psalm 126 and 1. Let me show that. This is the book of Psalm 126 and verse 1, or Psalm 127 and verse 1, Salakia. And it reads, it says, except the Lord Yahweh build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord Yahweh keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. So unless it's by the will of Yahweh Shem Yamashah, all of it is for naught. So let's go back. Let's leave Psalm 127. And go back to Acts 5 and 38 again. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. So all the brothers that have been coming out and speaking about the fact of, you know, things that are in the scriptures pertaining to King David, which is, that's all prophecy. The scriptures say that we will seek for our king in the latter days. So it would be, you know, it would make sense that at some point, which we are in the beginnings of Jacob's trouble, that we would be, this would be going on, right? Which is all prophecy. So anyone saying to, that something's wrong with that, or, you know, a person is, that that way of thinking is, is, is trash, you know, that there's demons on you or whatever, well, they're speaking against prophecy. Acts 5 and 39, but if it be of the most high, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against the most high. So something that's prophecy, you will be fighting against Shehah Bashim Yahushua to come against that. Something that's actually prophecy. Now let's show that. Let's show that further, right? Because there's a spirit that we should be in as believers. There, there's a spirit of error and there's a spirit of truth. What side are you on? Are you on the spirit of error or on the side of the spirit of truth? And all things will be revealed in time. So it's not about what we think individually or specifically. It's more about the word. How does everything line up with the words of Yahweh Bashim and Bashar? That's what we should be main concerned about. Any believer, when I say we, that, that speaks of any believer. You truly are a believer in Yahweh Bashim and Bashar. <clears throat> so now let's show that further. So this is a word, this is a words of wisdom I want to touch on. These are words of wisdom. These are the words of King David. This is Psalm 4 and verse 1. It says, a Psalm of David, hear me when I call, O power of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing? But know that the Lord Yahweh have set apart him 
that is godly for himself. So the Most High set, up, set aside those that are, are the godly, the Israel of God, the elect, the righteous for himself. So what man could speak on and say who a man of the Lord is or make themselves to be more of a man of, of the Lord than another person? Now, if wickedness is going on, then that's another thing. But if prophecy is being spoke, spoken about, something that is actually in the Bible, which we're going to touch on, then, then who is another man to, to speak on the servant of Yahweh Shemir Psalm 4 and verse 3. But know that the Lord Yahweh have set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord Yahweh will hear when I call unto him. So the Most High is hearing the, the prayers of the elect, the scriptures say. Psalm 4 and 4 in a point. It says, stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. So this is a time where really we see the Most High Yahweh Bashim Yabashai stirring things up, shaking things up. This is a time where, you know, many people should take the, the position of being still, which some have. And not getting in the midst of something, you know, that you could get caught up in, that this council you know, over time could be shown to be of the most high, you know, or be overthrown. But what if this council is of the most high? Believers, brothers, as I'm pushing this truth, doing it at the highest levels, right? Doing the work of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. This council that we see is not going nowhere. And I'm here to let that be known. And I'm saying this all through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yabashah. All things is done by the will of Yahweh Bashem Yabashah. But now, through the through the word and through the spirit of truth, you know, we see that the things of Yahweh Bashem Yabashah are going to stand, as we just read in Psalm 4 and 3. But know that the Lord Yahweh has set apart him that is godly for himself. So he, the most high is he who chooses who the elect are, who righteous or who are not. It says the Lord Yahweh will hear when I call unto him. So he's going to hear the believers and the believers will be what? In the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yabashah, right? They will be in the spirit of prophecy. So let me get this next precept, just going into the fact that the best position to take for a lot of men, especially those that are, that are not really familiar with what's really going on is, you know, to be blameless. You know, is to stand aside and let the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh work and let him show in time, you know, what is what. Let him show what is what. Now, this is the book of Exodus. See if I can get this real quick. Exodus, the 14th chapter. The scriptures say to be still. To be still. Exodus 14 and verse 13. And it reads, and Moses, Masha said unto the people, fear ye not. Stand still. Here we go again. We hear that word. We hear the words being said to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yabashah. So this is the time where we're going to see the Lord manifest, you know, all things that are found in this book that's spoken of and all of the last of the end time prophecies. Which one of the end time prophecies during the time of Jacob's trouble is that King David is going to be made manifest to the children of Israel before the coming of Yahweh Shah, which we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna touch on that. It says, which he will show to you today for the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Verse 14 and the point, Exodus 14 and 14, the Lord Yahweh shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. So the Most High is going to fight for the believers, the elect. And it says, and ye shall hold your peace. So that, that really just gets down to doing the work of Yahweh Bashim Yabashah, praying and having faith and letting the Most High actually be the one to show what is and what and what's not. Let him be the one, you know, to make all things, you know, be known according to his will, not according to the will of man. So is it about a brand? Is it about, you know, um, you know, being um being in a certain likeness or be, you know, being accepted? Is it about membership? Is it about being down? Or is it really about Yahweh Bashem Yabashah? Is it really about doing the work? Is it really about the scriptures? Is it really about truth? Now, 
Let's continue on. I got another precept. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach 17. And I'll start at mm, verse 25. <clears throat> Sirach 17, 25. And it reads, return unto Hadawan and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. So any believer should be standing still, but doing the works and, and doing the things that Hadawan requires for salvation. So we do that by forsaking our sins. We want to be blameless. We want to have clean hands and a clean heart as King David, you know, spoke and, and wanted and asked for of the Most High. It says, and make thy prayer before thy face and offend less. So that's truly how we offer up sacrifices of righteousness. Let me read that again. This is how we, 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 we go through the process of offering up sacrifices of righteousness. So Rock 17 and 25 Return unto Adawan and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. So we make our prayer before Yahweh Shai, and we offend less. Right? Because the scriptures tell us, you know, if we have that we've been given knowledge of the truth, if we continue in the ways of wickedness, roughly paraphrasing, there remaineth no more sacrifice for our sins. This is verse 26, Sirach 17 and 26. Turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity, for he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health, which is the truth, and hate thou abomination vehemently. We're supposed to hate all sin and wickedness with all that we have in us, right? So we should be striving to do the work and do the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh We should be striving to please the Most High, right, and not man, because the scriptures say such men only fear the eyes of man. And know if not that the eyes of Hadawan is 10,000 times brighter than the sun. So by nature, it's in man's nature to fear, to fear these things. We should be fearing Yahweh Hashem Yabashah. Because that, that fear of the Lord, that healthy fear of, of Hadawan, is how we show our solidarity with the Most High. That's how we show our true love and obedience by making true sacrifices of righteousness. Now, either the Most High is with you in this ministry and on this walk, or he's not. Clearly, that's what it is. Either you're of the elect and you're not. Now, we don't have anything on our foreheads or anything, you know, that, that says elect or non-elect. So first and foremost, it starts with faith. It starts with faith. So let's let's get this precept here. This is in the book of Second Ezra, the 16th chapter. I'm going to touch on that. I'm going to start at verse 70. And it reads, it says, for there shall be in every place. And in the next cities, a great insurrection upon those that fear Ha'adawan, which these times are upon us, right? We're not quite there yet, but these, these times are upon us. Verse 71, they shall be like madmen, sparing none. This is going to be Esau, Edom. When you read in um, the scriptures that speak about how the devil is going to come down on, on the believers with great wrath, on the nation of Israel with great wrath, Right? Second Ezra 16 to 71, they shall be like madmen, speaking of Esau, Edom, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear Ha'adawan. And who are those that fear Ha'adawan? Those that believe and those that are going to continue to believe and be faithful unto death. Verse 72, for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. These are all things that are to come, that are upon us. Verse 73, then shall they be known who are my chosen. So we still are in a time when the elect are going to be revealed. We pray and say that we are of the hopeful elect, but this is the time where the elect are going to be revealed amongst all the groups. Because once again, the most highest group is the elect. The most high doesn't belong to a particular brand, right? He belongs, you know, um, the elect belong to him. He, he's not known through a brand or through a name. He's known through the spirit and amongst all, you know, the uh, circumcision. So no one can lay claim to being, you know, the elect or the house of David. Although I know that that goes on amongst big box camps. And people would like to believe that whoever among them that's, that stands to their left and their right, that they would have to be of the elect. That's not so. The most highest is dealing with, you know, those that are meek and lowly. And that doesn't end with, you know, uh, any brand or group of people. There's elect members that's in the Christian church right now. 
that's in, that are in the Catholic Church, that's in, you know, Egyptology, that's in Islam, etc. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. Then we're going to know who the chosen are. And, and, they, and then it says, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. And the elect are going to be tried. So all men got to go through, you know, this fire. All men have to go through this fire to be shown who the elect are. Now, why, why, why did I bring that up? And why is that important? Here's why. Luke 10 and verse 19, it says, Behold, I give unto you power, speaking unto the elect, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Verse 20, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Then it will be, will be known clearly who the elect are because the elect, you know, are going to be protected and preserved and given salvation. Now, some are going to be martyrs for this truth. And they're going to be on the chairs with Yahweh Shai coming back, right? Awaiting the elect that are here on the earth, you know, to be beamed up. We read like in scriptures like 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. So now, then shall it be known who are the chosen. So no one has made it yet. We're all playing our role, you know, and many men are just pawns on the chessboard. Pawns on the chessboard. So we pray that Yahweh should be able to continue to keep the elect and the believers according to his will and give protection from all enemies, foreign and domestic, whether in the circumcision or in the world, whether of another nation or of Israel, right? Family, friends, whoever. So now let's continue to show that. This is the book of 2 Timothy 1, starting at verse 7, and it reads, for the Most High have not given us the spirit of fear. So knowing all these things are to come, you know, we are not to be in the spirit of fear. It says, but of power and of love and a sound mind, which is this truth is what gives us a sound mind. So we don't have the spirit of fear, right? Quaking fear, wondering and worrying about every single thing. Well, what's going to happen when Jacob's trouble come? What position am I going to be in? Am I going to be in a detention center? You know, am I going to be, you know, a pilgrim on the earth? You know, it's my lot to be, you know, um, put to death, to be beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai. I read it again. Second Timothy 1 and 7, for the Most High have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And that's what comes from this truth, from having this truth and believing in it. Verse 8, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony, it says, of Adawan Nawa, which is our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, the Apostle Paul speaking here, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of the Most High. So all these things that go on, right, is part of the afflictions. It's part of the afflictions that have to happen. And the scriptures say through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom. Now, I want to bring this next precept. It's going into what we just read. This is the book of Revelation 19. Because it, it spoke about, let me read that again before I bring this. 2 Timothy 1 and 8, it says, but be thou partakers of the afflictions. Now, before that, it says, be, 2 Timothy 1 and 8, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of Adawan Nawa of our Lord, right? So we're not supposed to be ashamed of the testimony. So I want to touch on that. Revelation 19 and 10, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the most high. For the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. So prophets will be prophesying. Prophets will be prophesying and giving the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Now, how would that look? Let's go to the book of Acts 20 and 24. And it reads, it says, but none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of Ha'adawan, Yahweh Shai, to testify the gospel of grace of the Most High. That's what we're doing. We're testifying, right, of Yahweh Shai. Verse 25, as the Apostle Paul did in the speaking. And now behold I, know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching, it says the kingdom of the Most High shall see my face no more. Verse 26, therefore I take you to this, I take you to record this day 
that I am pure from the blood of all men. Now, how did you become pure of the blood of all men? As the scriptures tell us, right? Verse 27, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of the Most High. Acts 20 and 27 again, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of the Most High. What does all the counsel of the Most High consist of? Let's hear the words from Yahweh Shai himself. Matthew 4, 1. Then was Yahweh Shai led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward in hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of the Most High, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Most High. So, all the counsel of Yahweh Shem Yahweh is every word that proceeds out of the mouth, every word that's found in this Bible. Right? That's the, that's the whole counsel that we have not shunned to declare, which is all the words found in this book, all the truth. So, the scriptures say that we would seek for David our king. So let's show that in these last days that we will be seeking for Malak Dawada or King David and show that that is, that is part of all the counsel of the Most High. There's no way around that. Now, whoever don't do it or don't want to do it, then that's their own reasoning. But it's clearly in the scriptures that we will be seeking, you know, for King David. Now, I'll start here. And so many places to go. And these are plenty of precepts. These are plenty of precepts that show that, that this is prophecy, right? And that this, this will be going on in the last days. Now, I'm going to start here in Jeremiah 30, which you can start from the very top, but I'm going to go to the point, right, for the sake of time. This video is already going a little longer, you know, than what I expected, but it's all through spirit. It's Jeremiah 30. And I'll start, mm, let's say, at verse 5, and it reads, for thus saith Yahweh, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman and travail, and all faces are turned into pale. This is speaking about the time of Jacob's trouble, as we continue to read. Right? So it says a man, you know, is going to be like a woman. Verse 7. Jeremiah 30 and 7, alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. And what is that day speaking of? This is the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter, and the first verse, and it reads, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Those whose names are written in the book of life, the men, women, and children that are of the elect, which is also known once again as the Israel of God. Back in Jeremiah 30 and 7, alas, for that day is great, speaking about the time of Jacob's trouble, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So the elect are going to be saved out of the time of Jacob's trouble. Verse 8, for it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yahweh of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and I will burst thy bonds and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Speaking of Israel, speaking of, you know, the, the elect, the believers, they're no longer going to be what? Subject unto the, the nations, the strange nations, you know, continuing on verse nine, but they shall serve Yahweh, their power and David, their king, whom I will raise up unto them. So this is speaking about the time of Jacob's trouble, that King David was going to be raised up, it says, unto them. He's going to be known amongst the elect. And as we go through the precepts, we're going to continue to see that, right? So it says, he will be raised up unto them. Let's read it again, Jeremiah 30 and verse 9. But they shall serve Yahweh, their power, and David, their king, whom I will raise up Unto them, and when you go into that word raised, it says King David will be raised up, and it's speaking about the time of Jacob's trouble. You go into that word raised, it goes into quam. Quam. It means to rise, to arise, to stand, to raise up, to stand up. David's gonna be is gonna be made manifest who he is at this time. It says to arise, to become powerful. He's gonna be given, you know, 
uh, um, spiritual power. And it's going to be known. He's going to be highly exalted. It says uh, to come on the scene, to maintain oneself, to be established, to be confirmed. He's going to be confirmed and established, right? At some point during um, Jacob's trouble. So now I'll read that one more time. Jeremiah 39, but they shall serve Yahweh with their power, which we're doing now. We're returning to this truth. It says, and David, Dawadah, their king, whom I will raise up unto them. So David's going to be raised up you know, in the midst of the elect. Now let's show that even further. This is the book of Hosea. And these are the precepts. If anyone has a particular problem with them, then they got a problem with, with Yahweh Shemim Bashat, not with the man that's bringing the message, not with the men that are out, you know, showing what's in the scriptures, which is another way, you know, it shows who's on the most highest team, you know, and who might have ulterior motives. Now, when, when, when these things are brought forth, it's all through the spirit of the Lord. Once again, how the wine is orchestrating this from the heavens. Now, if these words weren't in the Bible, you know, then that would be a whole nother question. But this is clearly being shown and seen in the scriptures for whoever have ears to hear. Because the scriptures tell us the most high is a power to hide it himself and that the secret things belong unto the most high. But the things that have been revealed unto us are for us and our children forever. The scriptures also tell us to... Um, to hide these words in the book and teach them to the wise of the people whose hearts thou know may comprehend and keep these secrets. Those that are really sincerely servants and believe in Yahweh Shemim Abishai with no ulterior motives, just in a pure heart. So this is about teaching and showing what's actually in the word. Now, a person can blow it off and say, we're not in a time where we need to be worried about that. But this is prophecy as we're reading. We just read it, you know. Uh, pertaining to Jeremiah the 30th chapter. Now we're going to go to Hosea the first chapter and see that this is actually indeed prophecy, right? Prophets will be prophesying. They will be prophesying. They will be in the testimony of Yahweh Shai, which is the spirit of prophecy. Hosea 1 and 10, yet the number of the children of Israel, Yahshua Allah, shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living power, which this lines up with Revelation 11 chapter. So where was the place where it was said that our people were not, you know, the people of Yahweh Shem Yom right here in America? Our people were called, you know, wetbacks, spicks, tomahawks, negroes, color, you know, all of these by words and proverbs, but not the true Israelites, not, not the true people of the Most High, the people of God. We weren't called the Israelites, Yasha Allah. Hosea 1 and 11, it says, Then shall the children of Judah, Yahweh, and the children of Israel, Yasha Allah, be gathered together, and we be gathered together now. Pertaining to when you read in Hosea the sixth chapter, the first and second verse, we're being gathered together. Also, when you go into the Valley of Dry Bones, Ezekiel the 37th chapter, amongst many other precepts, showing that we will be gathered together in the last days. Hosea 1 and 11, it says, And then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head. And who is that one head? It's King David. It says, And they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel, which is the planting of, of, of the Lord. So now, here in, 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 in Babylon, you know, this would happen. This prophecy is forth to come. Now, Let's show that further because it says they would we would appoint one head. It's going to be known, right, through King David being exalted in the last days, being raised up as we read the word raised. When you go back to um, you go back to Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, it says King David will be raised up among us. And it, now here in Hosea, the third chapter, it's uh, Hosea, the first chapter. We're going to the third chapter. It says that we will appoint ourselves one head, right? Now let's show that in Hosea, the third chapter. Hosea three, and I'll start at verse four. It's a short chapter, but I'll go right to the point. Hosea three, verse four, and it reads, for the children of Israel, Yahshua Allah, shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image and without an ephod and without a teraphim. Afterward, and that's the time we've been in, Right. Meaning we haven't been in rulership. We haven't been in our homeland. Right. 
we have lost our identity pertaining to uh, Jeremiah 17 and 4. We've been discontinued from our heritage. So this is a this is speaking just as it was in the book of Hosea, the first chapter. And in the 10th verse, where it spoke about how we would not be called the children, you know, we would not be known or called as the children of God. But there we would be called the children of living power, which is right now. So this lines up perfectly. Hosea 3 and 4. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image and without an ephod and without a teraphim. Afterward, shall the children of Israel return and we're returning now as we keep hearing that word return. We're coming back to the truth. We're returning and seek Yahweh their power. And we're seeking Yahweh Bashem Yomashah by way of this word, as it says in Malachi, you know, fourth chapter that, that, you know, Elijah, the prophet, would we'll turn you know, the heart of the children back to the fathers, the heart of the fathers back to the children. So that's how we're seeking the Lord, our power, which that goes back to Elder Abba Bivens, that through faith, myself and like-minded brothers believe that because it lines up with the scriptures. If not, then who who was the person that, that that's done that? Afterward, shall the children of Israel return and seek Yahweh their power and David their king. So we're going to seek Yahweh and then next, we'll be seeking for David our king, Right? So in these last days, it's prophecy that the believers will be seeking for King David. And it would make sense that the house of David is being raised up, that David would be, you know, would actually um, be made known at some point. And it would make sense that the, amongst the house of David, that, you know, the men of David would be actually seeking for him in the last days. Let's read it again. Hosea 3 and 5, afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord Yahweh their power, which we're doing now and David their king, right? Continuing on, it says, and shall fear the Lord Yahweh and his goodness in the latter days. And when you look up latter days, it makes it clear. It's in the last days. So this will be going on in the latter days, right? In the last days. Now, let's show that even further. This is speaking about now. This is the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. So I spoke about this at camp a few weeks ago, you know, in a video I did called, if you, if you disagree, then just unsubscribe, which is really just pushing out the idea that, Hey, if you don't want to take heed, then that's fine. You don't have to agree. You don't have to, you know, agree or even listen for that matter. Cause some people have made it up in their minds the way that something is right. As opposed to hearing and examining the matter. So, this was something I, I spoke on and I now just wanted to come out with the scriptures and just show, you know, clearly what's in the Bible. Now, let's, let's show that. This is the book of Ezekiel 37. Um, it's a lot of, I want to get to the point. Now, this is in the Valley of the Dry Bones. Uh, I'll, I'll start it. I'll start at um, 23. It says, neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things nor with any of their transgressions, but I will save them out of all their dwelling places. So that's what's to come, us being saved out of our dwelling places. Wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them, so shall they be my people and I will be their power. And David, my servant, shall be king over them and they all shall have one shepherd. So, so when it spoke about, you know, us appointing one head, that's speaking of King David. That's going to be before the coming of our Lord, because we know Yahweh Shai is going to be Lord of Lord, Lord of Lords and Kings of Kings. Let's read that again. Ezekiel 37, the same chapter of the Valley of the Dry Bones, right toward the end, speaking about what was going to happen, happen after Israel was given the breath again, etc. And they would come back to life and they would stand on their feet in exceeding great army. As you keep reading down, this is, this is what will come after that. Ezekiel 37 to 24, it says in David. My servant shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Now, I want to merit that with this here in the scriptures, just continuing on, right? Because a lot of this is also foreshadowing 
you know, to the kingdom. But let's go to Ezekiel, the 34th chapter. Ezekiel 34. And just touch on a few of these precepts. Ezekiel 34. Now I'll go to the point. Mm, let's see. It's Ezekiel 34. And I'll start at, uh, let me see, Samachia. Yep. Ezekiel 34 and verse 22. It says, therefore, therefore, will I save my flock? And what's the what's that flock? Scripture say, fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So that flock is speaking of the elect. Therefore, will I save my flock and they shall no more be a prey. And I will judge between cattle and cattle. And I will set up one shepherd over them and he shall feed them. Even my servant, David. He shall feed them and he shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, Yahweh, will be their power. And my servant, David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, Yahweh, have spoken it. So who's going to be, you know, appointed? Who's going to be sought for and be put back into their proper position before the coming of Yahweh Shah? Speaking of King David. Speaking of King David. Now let's, let's continue uh, to show that. Verse 25, and I will make them, and I will make with them a covenant of peace, and I will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land, and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness. And that's going to happen in the last days. Lines up also with Revelation, the 12th chapter. And sleep in the woods. So you see clearly what's going to be going on in these last days. So now, when when it spoke about... um. um What's the point? Verse 22, therefore will I save my flock. This is Ezekiel 34 and 22. Therefore will I save my flock and they shall no more be a prey. And I will judge between cattle and cattle. That's found also in Matthew, the 25th chapter, the 31st through the 36th verse, showing you that the both sides gonna separate between cattle and cattle, the righteous, the sheep on the right side and the goats on the left side, right? And that's what that's making reference to. It also lines up with Psalm, the 23rd chapter. When it goes into, when you read that chapter, being led beside the still waters, right? That's this truth. So with all these things, it's all through the spirit of Yahweh Shemir Bashai that all these things are going on. And that those that stand for this truth and, and stand in truth and sincerity and in honesty with integrity, then hey, if that's your position, then you're going to stand up for Yahweh Shemir Bashai no matter what the opposition is. Because ultimately, it's about Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. It's not about clout. It's not about, you know, a brand. It's not about, you know, numbers, you know, views, likes. You know, all of that's not going to matter. Truly, the heart of the believers is what matters and what Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is looking at according to his word. So with that, I hope that was edifying. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rekakwadash, double honor to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, peace, love, blessings, and salutations. Be to the hopeful elect, Habayath, Madawada, the house of David, the brothers laboring day in and day out, giving all diligence to make their calling of election sure, helping seal the elect of the nation of Israel for the return of our Lord Hamashiach Yahweh is at hand. And to the Akim Makwath, brothers and sisters that also listen and believe on this glorious gospel being preached throughout the four corners of the earth. And to you, I say Shalom.